Part Two of Hollywood: Its Morals and Manners. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Chuck Williamson. Hollywood: Its Morals and Manners by Theodore Dreiser. Part Two. The Commonplace Tale with a Thousand Endings I have in mind a certain director, one of the staff of directors of one of the larger studios, who is, to say the least, a rather ridiculous illustration of what I mean. At one time he was a butcher's helper and made a humble wage at cutting steaks and chops. At present he is a fairly capable shooter of five-reelers, and is not at all disliked by those who employ him. Yet, mentally, he is not much above a certain type of director in filmdom, which is not saying very much, you may be sure. Although a bachelor, via the divorce court, he has his home, his butler, his car, his this, his that with a little home brew thrown in for good measure. About the studios, and among the flappers, he poses as being a, well, a member of a certain rather popular faith. Among directors and film workers generally, those who know of him at all, he is known as a chaser of sorts, one of those who are more than inclined to annoy the novices of beauty who chance to come in contact with him on his sets. Well, there you have the stage set, as it were. Now we will say it is nine o'clock of a certain Los Angeles morning, and Cerise, aged nineteen or thereabouts, and but newly engaged to play the part of a charming niece in a comedy which our director is about to direct, has come upon the set for the first time, and is looking joyfully and gratefully about. She is pink and vigorous, with golden or black hair, as you will, and eyes with that haunting freshness that is among the requisites of beauty in youth. Also, there is a smile that is truly winsome, because it is suggestive of pleased wonder. At sight of Cerise, who is being handed him by the casting director, and who, as he latterly phrases it, has proved to be a pippin for once. He is all eyes, and yet distant. For so difficult has the game become of late, so watchful the money power, so tricky and ungrateful the various vamps and succubi of the profession, who, to say the truth, have not used him any too well, that at last he is developing a little caution. Yet so great is the lure of youth, in this instance, as in that of so many others, that he can scarcely keep his mind on his work. He begins forthwith to talk more loudly, to give more directions than are absolutely necessary, to direct with a vengeance, as some unhappy thespian of his set now makes bold to comment to another, and all on account of that young skirt over there. Tis the way of a portion of the directors of moviedom at least and within the hour of her arrival if you will believe it and after the direction of many many pictures he is her slave yet still at a respectful distance the sight of the heavy of this set sitting down beside her and beginning an enticing conversation is sufficient to cause him all but to suffocate with envy, fear, and rage. What? That waster? Is he about to attempt an additional conquest here? Forthwith he proceeds to give said actor instructions in regard to something in order to divert his mind, or his mood, or both. 
just stay over here near me williams i want you to see what is going on here so you can get into the spirit of this thing for once note the for once a little later it may be an extra who has intruded upon the newcomer with kind words and a smile at once he is aflame with secret rage and envy off the set off the set that means you fisher i don't want any but principals and the members of the cast around here now exit the abashed and angry fisher silent because he needs very much to court the favor of all in these trying days by nightfall after sidling near at many points of the day and work with pleasant if inane references to the character of the work in hand his plans for it the impossibility almost of finding ideal types for the several roles he is ready for his coup or play but you certainly have beauty just the person i have been looking for if i had known of you when i was casting my last picture i certainly could have made a place for you now cerise like so many others of her years and sex is all aflame with what it means to be a star or within the ranks of those who may reasonably aspire to stellar honors fortunately or unfortunately as you will she has a mother who to further her picture ambitions has left her native state with her and journeyed to far los angeles in order to open a millinery establishment or to herself work in a store the apartment that between them they can afford is the humblest in addition it is with the greatest difficulty and care that cerise has achieved the few attractive garments which she now possesses by the aid of which she hopes to forward herself as much as possible more would be welcome of course hence the thrill at the thought of making so marked an impression and of being made to feel that additional work may be in store for her here at the end of the day then when sir director lingers and offers the service of his car she is appropriately elated of course he is taken with her as a screen possibility he will be glad to forward her career because of her innate fitness for the work now the conclusion of this particular incident may be as your fancy dictates but depend upon it however you personally may decide to end it it will have had at some time or other a counterpart in real life it depends on the temperament and hence the practical judgment or lack of it of the one thus enthusiastically approached or often her mother or friends or the character of her bad friend in some other way by far the largest number of those who decide to test this world are sophisticated beyond their years whatever their years may be they are in the main practical to this extent but they are here to realize on their ability and charm as swiftly as possible ushered into the very much benickled car of a personage in this realm and offered a dinner or at least a little chocolate en route and told very plainly and earnestly as to what the prospects of advancement are well the matter would certainly be taken into consideration and thought upon at length if not decided upon immediately such a seemingly real impression is not made every day if the situation of the aspirant is very complicated and her need for aid pressing well yet as a rule they know enough that no situation is likely to be injured by a little waiting also that one should look most carefully over the cliff before they leap 
beyond this and a little time taken the thing may end most any way and does it might well be called the commonplace tale with a thousand endings yet in this case as in all others of the same type unless the situation is handled by the aspirant with the utmost tact the director failing will see to it that no more favors of any kind are extended her by him he may even become very disagreeable in connection with the work in hand so much so that she might well find it impossible to complete the work then and there doing the theory is that if he is not good enough for her and she thinks so very well of herself let her get someone else to do favors for her depend upon it he will not and more than one director has had to be released from one and another studio before he would cease his annoying tactics not all beginners will endure such assaults without complaint yet in the main they do and it is thus that one opportunity after another with one director after another has been lost and advancement all but closed because the aspirant chanced to be of exceptional charm and was desirous of making her way without compromise except where her affections were honestly engaged indeed the more one wanders about and wins to wisdom in this matter of picture production the more one comes to note the shabby and pinbeck point of view that holds not only in most of the counting offices of all these great concerns where the petty and often pretty beginner is concerned but also in the minds of directors casting directors assistant directors cameramen the heavies and even leads of the male persuasion who have anything to do with or can by any hook or crook contrive any possible claim upon the time or attention or services of those of the feminine persuasion the younger and prettier and less experienced of course who are seeking to make an ill-paid way in this in the main grueling realm the shabby and even shameful impositions the sharp exactions in the matter of time and money hours for instance that stretch from eight to six and even longer on the set and in costume for a wage which when measured by the number of employed days one will come by in the course of a year is ridiculously and even pitifully inadequate the general assumption on the part of many directors assistant directors and even stage carpenters and electricians that somehow because these hundreds and even thousands of girls are compelled to or at any rate are desirous of making their living or their way in this field and have all too little financially wherewith to do that therefore they are and of right ought to be the sexual prey of these men also that any opposition on their part to being so used or even pursued can only be based upon a disagreeable and even reprehensible vanity or better than thou spirit which should never for a moment even be tolerated by one in so lofty a position as any of the above the often undesired and in many cases resented overtures and insults which nevertheless because of the nature of the work and the driving character of the ambition of those insulted may never be properly rebuked and where one such chances to be usually winsome and earnest and eager to make progress without compromise the rebuffs impositions and preventing or delaying oppositions even though all the necessary talent for the situation may be properly presented may endure for a period of years in some instances quite until hope is exhausted 
in writing this i have in mind not one but something like twenty-five aspirants of exceptional beauty and ability and admitted screen charm who nevertheless and because of a lack of means combined with an unfortunate determination to fight their way upwards without compromise on the emotional side are still after several years of unremitted struggle or intelligent application as you will about where they began at first and that in the face of others of no more ability who have risen much more rapidly it is true that during that time and by reason of some little money with which they came plus the employment they have had they have managed to live and take their part in the movie social world about them also that they have acquired much of the necessary screen technique which coupled at this time with an opportunity of some kind might easily lead to recognition of a very grateful character they are among those who whenever some exceptional minor part that takes ability but not much time is to be cast are sent for and in such things they appear quite regularly their faces for brief intervals are to be seen in many pictures but will they succeed eventually that certainly depends to a degree upon the presence of others of equal attractions who are not so frugal with their favors during the time they have been upon the scene not one of them but has had over and over advances made to them by one and another of force and distinction in the realm in which they seek to shine but in each and every case for reasons best known to themselves these opportunities have been allowed to slip by speaking of one of them a sonorist of no little popularity once observed to me for the life of me i can't see why mary hangs on out here she has ability tons of it and if she were only backed by someone she would make a strike all right a few of the right sort of posters a good vehicle and a press agent and she would get over with a bang but here she is drifting along and here she will be five years from now trailing others who haven't a fourth of her genuine charm unless she quits what's the answer she isn't coarse fibred enough that's all she can't bring herself to do the things that most of them do oh if she would he said no more than the truth but that is not the sum of the story by any means end of part two